from Global Winnipeg, this is Focus Manitoba with Lorraine McNabb. Good evening and welcome to Focus Manitoba. The predictions of the world's top polar bear expert this week were dire. Wildlife biologist Ian Sterling says global warming will force Manitoba's polar bears so far north that in three decades, you will no longer be able to see them in Churchill. It's a bleak prediction for a town already struggling with the news its other economy, a port that employs more than 100 people, needs to make some major changes if it hopes to be fully functioning in one year's time. That's where we begin tonight, on the Hudson's Bay, with a port potentially in peril. The port waters are calm. The shipping season in Churchill over. But don't you dare suggest to the town's mayor that the quiet herd here is here for good. That a key component of Churchill's economy, the port, could soon be as threatened as that other P, polar bears. It isn't fair. I mean, we as a community are are looking towards a brighter future. We have to. I mean, there are opportunities here that we need to look at, and I'm, I'm sure we'll be okay. That's not how the other side has been selling Ottawa's decision to dismantle the Canadian Wheat Board. Through rallies. Thanks for supporting the farmers. Protests. And more rallies again. They're predicting a much bleaker scenario. Eliminating the Canadian Wheat Board will cost prairie farmers money cost Canadian jobs, be a drain on taxpayers, and change the nature of the country because thousands of family farms will disappear. If you're not a farmer, proposed federal legislation to... And if these provincial ads are to be believed, potentially right along with them, the Port of Churchill, whose biggest user is the Canadian Wheat Board. Or that the Port of Churchill and its rail line depend on a strong CWB. It's making things sound like it's doom and gloom when they want to look to the future. To me, the, the, the doom and gloomers are the ones who are accepting the fact, as is the federal government, that, that we can just move off into some undefined, uh, unthought-out... Um, unsubstantiated uh, framework. It's political, complicated, and depending on where you stand, downright divisive. Since 1943, prairie farmers have been obligated to market wheat and barley through the Wheat Board, a monopoly originally designed to bring farmers the greatest returns. A wartime policy the federal conservatives have long believed is outdated. By this time next year, farmers will have the freedom to sell their grain however they choose. From my perspective, and I think a lot of my neighbours, um, change, is, change is necessary. But change will be challenging for Churchill, because 90% of the shipments made through there this year were grain bought and sold by the CWB. It can keep me awake at night sometimes, but... Uh, there's, there's definitely opportunity for us. Brad Chase is the president of Omnitrax, the port's owner. And the opportunity he speaks of is in Canada's deep north, where mining towns in Nunavut are booming. A short shipping by vessel to get it into the Kivalik region. And increasingly in need of consumer goods. Everything from automobiles to televisions to grocery supplies, etc. So we're working very hard to grow that business. Geographically, it makes sense. By ship, the Kivalik region in Nunavut is only a few hours from Churchill, yet 85% of the supplies that region receives are shipped through the St. Lawrence Seaway, meaning goods are travelling all the way around Newfoundland and northern Quebec before they ever enter Hudson's Bay. We've had some, I'll say, setbacks. There's, there's a significant amount of volume that goes out through the east coast and around and, and into the region where we could be supplying that. The advantage of the St. Lawrence Seaway is the sheer volume of goods moving in and out of this area. And when you consider many of the ships that originate there are already resupplying northern Quebec, the hike onto Churchill starts to make more sense. What doesn't, as far as Manitoba's agriculture minister is concerned, is Ottawa's plan. While the federal government has pledged some nine million per year for the next five years to make Churchill more competitive, it hasn't outlined how it will convince businesses outside the wheat board to use Churchill, a port that's only open four months per year. They're not going to just, through the, the charity of their hearts, run grain through Churchill. Uh, they're business people. They're smart business people. They've made a lot of money. Uh, making smart decisions. But if you look at a map like this, Churchill is a lot closer to outside markets than many other Canadian ports. 
Use Churchill instead of Thunder Bay, and you could save six days of travel, some $40,000. The kind of numbers Churchill's mayor is crunching, instead of the suggestion his town could soon be losing some 100 jobs. Where is the win-win in all of this? Well, that's what we have to do. We have to find the win-wins in all of this. We'll be successful. Well, that other P we mentioned has always been a big draw for tourists. Polar bears have been captivating both tourists and researchers in Churchill for years. But their future is on thin ice. Global's Kate Kadozik will visit Churchill a little later in the show. But first, an inland port that could bring more business to this city and the north. Why would I care? Jobs, jobs, jobs. Welcome back. The melting of the Arctic sea ice has some experts predicting the polar bear population in Churchill could disappear within the next 30 or 40 years. A sad prediction considering the smiles these bears bring to the faces of thousands of tourists. Global's Keika Dosik recently spent the day in Churchill and like so many tundra buggy adventurers before her, she returned with hundreds of photos and memories. There are many reasons to make the two-hour flight to Churchill, Manitoba, but on this crisp November day, there is just one to see them. Churchill is the polar bear capital of the world, and this morning, 35 of us excitedly set out with our cameras racked and ready and our eyes frantically scanning the horizon for movement. Our first sighting comes as we leave the airport. He's nestled in the rocks and saunters across the jagged platform to say hello. He's small and young, but still an incredible way to be officially welcomed to Churchill. To see him in his natural habitat come up and being curious about us and not afraid of us was pretty amazing to me. From there we board a tundra buggy, a massive roving vehicle capable of maneuvering the Arctic terrain of northern Manitoba and even the harshest winter conditions. The rules inside are simple. It doesn't move until everyone sits down. If it stops, it's because a bear has been spotted. And then the dance for the best vantage point begins. Sometimes you just have to enjoy the, the moment rather than thinking you're going to get a National Geographic shot. Jim Baldwin has been traversing the Churchill Tundra for the last six years, but this year is different. I've noticed this year in particular that there aren't as many bears. I don't know if that's a trend or if it's just a weather hiccup that is slowing them down to get here, but there aren't as many bears as there would be this time last year. Even with fewer bears, I alone snap over 300 photos. A bear playing. <laughs> a curious bear jumping up on a tundra buggy. And one who just wants to sleep. They all have such different personalities. One of them didn't want anything to do with us. One of them checked out our tour bus as soon as we left the base. And this guy is actually, right now, if you want to zoom in on him, he's been challenging the people on that tundra buggy for about 10 minutes. Amazing. They are the world's largest land carnivore and a worldwide symbol of the barren and often unforgiving north. But global climate change, shrinking polar ice caps and disappearing sea ice has also made them a sad symbol of the changing face of the Arctic ecosystem. It's for that very reason tourists travel here from around the world. Some on this trip came all the way to northern Manitoba from Texas. I was a little afraid, you know, with all the global warming and everything, that they wouldn't be around much longer, and I thought I better come see them before, you know, mankind does so much damage that they're not here any longer. I love Manitoba. I've been here many times, and uh, we, we love Canada. This has been a dream of mine forever, and I just retired, and I've wanted to see a polar bear, and I saw a polar bear as soon as we arrived. It's been an awesome day. It's the most awesome land mammal on the planet. Uh, your life changes when a polar bear looks you in the eye. And the tundra is beautiful in itself, especially on a day like today. And uh, just the whole fragile ecosystem in a very hostile environment is the thing that lures me back. Everybody needs to see this at least once. It's just an incredible experience, something you would never believe if you didn't see it live. After almost eight hours on the tundra, it's time to turn back. 35 of us just having enjoyed the experience of a lifetime. But for one of us, it was about to get even better. This is unbelievable. This is like, I don't even have words to describe this. 
No one's even worried. Built-in tour guide and weather caster. Do you like how we cleared away nicely to a mix of sun and cloud today? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Winds out of the west, 30 kilometers an hour. Nice. Gusting to 40. Nice. Who can talk and drive at the same time, right? Watch out for the polar bear. <laughs> we drive off into the sunset, letting this day end so another can begin. Tomorrow, a new group will arrive for the exact same reason we did. That is so amazing that they're in our own backyard. Well, another thing Manitobans are hoping to brag about is football. As we look ahead to the Eastern Conference Final between the Bombers and Ticats, we thought we should look back at the stadium that helped get them there. That's next. Touchdown, Blue Bombers! How do you feel about throwing for over 700 yards? Well, I'm not used to breaking records, so uh, it's new water for me. It uh, feels, feels good. I'm glad my son and my wife are here to see it. 